This morning we have signed up to do something called a fig forest walk. It has to be guided and it actually takes place in I think the oldest or if not one of the world's oldest sycamore fig forest um, with some of the trees dating to over 900 years old which is pretty spectacular. I'm literally going to strip my gear down to a GoPro which I'll be talking on uh, whenever there's a gap to talk. Obviously you have to be quiet on bushwalks and this cannon. Um, so we'll see what we can see but yeah looking forward to it. Some birds that you'd like to see? Uh, well, Pell's fishing hour would be great. Um, yeah, near god sunbird, green mokoa, lots of cool species in the in this fig forest. So, yeah, I think anything will be anything will be lacquer. Just be nice to walk through there as well. Mm, for sure. Something great. Yeah, you see, last time you promised us an L, so now you'll have to deliver. Eh? <laughs> oh, I'm, we happy with that promise. The <laughs> Thank you. For those of you who missed our previous vlogs from this trip, I'll quickly fill you in. Blair and I are in the lesser known Mkuzi Game Reserve in KwaZulu-Natal, which is a 40,000 hectare reserve in northern Zululand and a part of the spectacular Isimangaliso wetland area. Although Mkuzi is a big five reserve, don't expect to see the big and hairies as you would in the Kruger. Although I was saying that, we did luck out with that leopard and the lion in camp. Instead, however, the reserve is a birder's haven, with more than 420 species on record and is regarded as South Africa's second best birding area after the Kruger. Despite not seeing too many mammals, which, to be honest, we weren't too fussed about, the stunning scenery, the well-managed camp, and the beautiful bird hides and picnic areas will definitely see us coming back to Mkuzi. Yeah, but if we luck, we might see a pearl fishing owl, Narina tribal, African broadbill, in Makoa and a few more of interesting ones. So I hope we're gonna see one. Sounds Push. good. Even one of those is good. So this is the fig forest walk and I didn't or rather I couldn't do much talking to camera as we had to be silent for most of the walk. You can only do this walk guided due to the presence of the big five, especially seeing as though the buffalo, elephant and hippo tend to hang out in the area that we walked. I would highly recommend booking this walk which you can do at the Mantuma reception the day before as it is in fact Africa's last indigenous fig forest with some of the trees dating to over 900 years old. These beautiful specimens fruit all year round and therefore attract a large amount of birds and animals 
who apart from eating the delicious fig fruits, also enjoy escaping from the heat by parking off along the banks of the Mkuzi River. Unfortunately, we can't really tick off the Pals fishing now, although we did see very short glances of him. As we came into the fig forest, we spooked him and he flew off. And we spent about an hour after that trying to track down his location. So close. Blair and I were saying afterwards that we were kind of glad that we didn't get a proper sighting of him as it keeps the chase alive and I guess we'll have to travel to new places to try and see him again. We're seeing the pulse fishing. Oh, we saw him fly a couple of times, but uh, yeah, he only flies short distances from one tree to the other. But once he's in this thick canopy above, it's so hard to see him. So we've been hunting for him for most of the morning. Yeah, but this walk is beautiful. I would definitely recommend this if anyone is coming to Mkuzi. So, welcome to our new humble abode for the night. Uh, we have changed rooms or chalets, tents, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, we are spending our last night in one of these safari tents. They are really cool inside. It's got your little bathroom and beds in there. And then it's got a little kitchenette outside. Yeah, and this is our little spot. It feels a lot more wild, if you will, than our last place. And um, yeah. This is really cool. This is still part of Mantuma camp in Makuzi. Um, if it is just two of you, I'd really recommend these safari tents. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a little look into what our tent looks like. Little outside deck area. And then... Two beds ample space even comes with a fan which is great in summer and then there's a little bathroom through here and this is the little bathroom got a shower and a toilet through there it's pretty awesome Blair has left and he's just needed to pop into some farms in the surrounding area for work. I'm going to stay here, edit a bit, read, birdwatch, chill out and enjoy our last full day here as well as make some brekkie. This is the most annoying feature of any vehicle. Yeah. What is the quickest way there? It's past the Lubombo viewpoint. Just on tar. On tar, yeah. On tar all the way there and then left.
dinner is served. Indeed. So, was this a Jamie Oliver recipe? No, it's my private personal recipe. Okay, but... It's fine, I don't know. <laughs> um, we make our own store, but... We do, but gotta do what you gotta you do. Toast your, you toast your buns, you must toast your buns, it adds so much more flavour. Boys have toasted buns. <laughs> and you put a little bit of coleslaw on the bottom, just to make a little base. And moisture with the mayo. And moisture with the mayo, it's delicious. Then your chicken breasts that you cut up finely and often I tenderize them a little bit just to make them a bit softer and cook a bit quicker. Then a little schmarky. There we go. And then a nice char grilled pineapple. Mm -hmm. That's oh. tin pineapple by the way. Pineapple. You need to buy the tin pineapple for the tin. syrup. Um, and then normally what we do is we take a chili and we chop a chili up fine and then you mix it in with this with a leftover pineapple syrup and it makes this like really zingy tasty chili sauce but obviously we forgot chilies um, so now we're just going to pour a little bit of the, the syrup on just to give it a bit of a bit more moisture and a bit of um, flavor and then top it off with a little bit more coleslaw and Bob's your uncle, the most delicious chicken burger you will ever eat. I second that. It is delicious and so simple and great to have on a trip like this. Yo, that is loaded. Oh, that looks good. Enjoy. I will certainly. So trippy. Oh. <laughs> What's your verdict? delicious every time despite not having two vital ingredients it's really good sorry i'm having to shine the torch in your eyes <laughs> to get some light on you yeah no this is good So for those of you who are actually wondering what Squarespace does or who they are, they provide powerful website designs with already made templates, which you can then customize to fit your business or your brand's personal style, making the setting up process really simple and easy. I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I particularly love with Squarespace and my current website that I'm working on. The first is the portfolios and gallery feature where this allows you to present your work and projects in a professional looking capacity. Another thing that is invaluable is their built-in SEO features to help your site rank better in search results, as well as a range of features for analytics, which include things like demographics, devices your audience is viewing your site on, and how they're interacting with your site and products. It also allows you to integrate popular tools and apps onto your site, such as Dropbox, Xero, to name a few. And if you need to make any changes while on the go, particularly great if you're traveling a lot, you can edit your websites on Squarespace's powerful app, which works on both iOS and Android. So if you're interested in giving Squarespace a go, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if you like what you see, go to squarespace.com forward slash Nicole Eddy for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video.